new globalism describes the challenge uh, the world faces today. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we are in a world which is uh, ever more globalized, ever more interconnected, ever more interdependent. One need only think about the recent uh, Sendai earthquake and the ensuing tragedy in Japan and the immediate implications it had for, for the entire global community. And likewise, uh, through technology and social media, we are able today to witness in real time and minute by minute uh, what is happening on the streets in countries which are seemingly far away. But on the other hand, there's the paradox that perhaps the approaches that the world is taking towards such complex challenges are increasingly individual or, or national in character. And therefore, responding to the new globalism is about how leaders, not just from government and not just from industry, but also increasingly from civil society, uh, from trade unions, uh, from younger generations uh, must come together to form the private um, and public partnerships that are necessary to address such complex challenges as resource scarcity or uh, climate change. This is actually a platform for creating exactly these public-private partnerships. And I can give you two examples of that. Uh, for tackling an issue like food security, we're in a situation today where food prices are spiraling and increasing and, and put a lot of pressure, especially on the poor, um, to buy uh, basic commodities like food. So we are bringing together the CEOs from major international food companies, together with policymakers of agriculture uh, from the region, but also with voices from civil society, from NGOs, including farmers themselves, and putting them together at one table to uh, discuss a framework for addressing how to in uh, improve agricultural productivity, uh, reducing um, the impact on the environment um, despite having a higher output in food, and uh, to put forward those recommendations uh, in partnership with governments like Vietnam, with whom we partnered last year, and this year with Indonesia. Uh, likewise, in Indonesia, we'll be launching a so-called disaster resource partnership. This will bring together the CEOs from engineering and construction companies, logistics and transport companies, and bring their commitment and their expertise with the humanitarian relief sector and with actors from the government of Indonesia to ensure that response mechanisms are in place when natural disasters like earthquakes or tsunamis occur and that we can ensure that there's a faster delivery uh, to those in need, to the victims, when such unexpected events take place. Well, this is actually the 20th anniversary of the summit and over the past 19 years the summit has taken place in different countries, uh, including Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Japan, Korea. And it's in fact the first time that the summit is taking place in Indonesia. And by going from uh, one country to the other country, it gives us the opportunity to highlight the progress that has been made overall in the region. If one looks back at these past two decades, there's no other region of the world which has reduced poverty as much uh, as has been the case in, in East Asia. And Indonesia is perhaps a very good illustration of the kinds of political and economic transformations which have taken place in the region. In the past 20 years, Indonesia has made a successful transition from an authoritarian regime uh, to a stable democracy. It's now a member of the G20. In fact, it's the third fastest growing economy in Asia, only behind China and India, but it's also a compelling country in and of itself in terms of its youthful demography. Uh, for the next 15 years, uh, over 50% uh, of Indonesia's population will be 39 years of the age and younger. It's the country with one of the highest Facebook userships uh, in the world. Uh, the most tweets from Asia come from Indonesia. So there are a lot of exciting um, dynamics to the economy which made it a, a logical choice. And since we discussed before the importance of partnerships, 
uh, I think it's valuable to mention that Indonesia is this year the chair of ASEAN. Uh, and in that role is looking exactly at ways in which the region can cooperate to tackle many of those same challenges uh, which I'd mentioned before.